Good evening YouTube, or wherever you are out there in the world, might be afternoon, might be morning, here in the UK it's the evening. So I want to say hello first of all to everyone watching, thank you for tuning in today. Hello YouTube world, and of course Model Railway community, this is Triple Valve 62 at the depot saying welcome and mind the doors. Okay, so moving on to today's video, I want to show you two things. Firstly, I want to show you guys the goods yard extension I've virtually finished. Um, and secondly, this is a tribute video, um, in my own way, to a man that we lost the other week, uh, who was a great wildlife conservationist in Africa, um, a hugely successful painter and artist, done some really lovely paintings of elephants and wildlife in Africa, and of course he was the former owner of the 9F Loco Black Prince. I'm talking about, of course, David Shepherd, who we lost the other week, very sad to hear that. Um, so we'll be seeing a 9F in action as a tribute to him, in the meantime, I'm going to pan over and show you this coal yard that I've uh, just virtually finished today. Still got a bit more to do in it, but I'll show you now. Here we go. So we've now got the scenic sheets in place and weathered. These coal stayers were pretty much simple to make out of coffee stirrers. I made a load of fencing out of these and just basically had a bit left and chopped it down a little bit. Added some coal dust on there. The brick wall is uh, the sheet and the material you can get from uh, wheels that's been glued on the back there on that back seam board and as we go along we've got some real coal in there meant to show you that that's just held down with PVA that's the real black gold stuff there nothing looks better than coal than real coal I always think that's true again this <coughs> excuse me this stone sheet and cobblestone sheet in or more so the stone sheet in I got from wheels um, the way I've done this was quite simply take a, a paintbrush and dip it in hammerite paint and then flick it across the surface to and fro very 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 fast and quickly and you blend in the colour at the same time as cleaning off the paint from the brush onto the surface of whatever you're doing and you get this dirty coal yard surface effect and then while it was dry I just sprinkled in a tiny little bit of uh, blended turf material from uh, Woodland Scenic and then we've done pretty much the same on the wall there with a little bit of vegetation grown up the side added a bit of coal dust rubbed into the brick material as you can see and these little huts here these little buildings, outbuildings believe it or not, these were from the Hornby Lionside Accessory Pack that you get the telegraph poles from and the loading gauge water, water crane I believe and I got this um, believe it or not the Thomas the Tank Engine set bundle that originally I bought for my daughter but it came with a station hall platform and a line side detail pack and these were two nice little buildings I thought if I could paint and actually uh, slightly customise they won't look too bad and of course here they are so what I've done with these two buildings, I've added a little bit of a uh, base to them in the form of some wheel scenic material pavement sheets. Just cut a little border base around them to glue them onto and then suitably weather them. And that one there I've just painted completely. That one there lives there. And then what I've done over here, this is a piece of uh, fencing I had from leftover from Hornby platform fencing just paint again painted it and just weathered it slightly a little bit of ivy going over the side there and come around this angle Whoop. show you this side and to me it's very simple it's very simple to do Um, the other thing I've done as well, you can do this at home, if you've got static grass on your layout or you've got anywhere with static grass on your model railway and it works for any gauge, um, take some light blue paint and you can, you can drop in bluebell flowers as you can see I've done there, just blend different colours and it works for any scale, that's a little idea. Again all I've done was just got a paintbrush, dipped it in some blue paint and just dabbed in a little bit of blue to a certain little area 
to give the impression of some wild bluebell flowers growing there or something like that. Um, that's pretty much that. The shiny surface of this um, goods yard complex area, that's just how, again hammerite paint, I experimented with this and gave it a very light coat of hammerite and it came out um, like this and I quite like that Jimmy to be honest with you, I think it was quite good. It's a nice contrast between that and the dirty um, cobblestone effect there of the coal yard. Okay, so if we move the camera around here, maybe you get a different perspective that you might have just seen, I'm not sure, probably I've just done that shot, but anyway, there we go, so that's pretty much that. Um, the sign there that says coal office, that's very easy to do. Again, I used the, oh, was it now? Coopercraft. They do a station name board and station signal box series where you can cut the letters out and make your own station names and signal box name plates consisting of large letters that you cut out of a sprue and using a craft knife and a scalpel um, should I say scalpel works best to be honest with you, that's what I use I just basically cut the letters out stuck them on a piece of coffee stirring stick glued them in place and then went over the top with a little black permanent marker yeah, that's simple enough and the, the little light outside is scratch built as well just a little bit of electrical wire super glued on the end of an old uh, light and fitting that came off of that building underneath okay so that's that pretty much there that area looks quite nice now I think that looks quite good there and there we go so I'm going to stop this a minute and then we'll get running some trains yeah so I'll see you in a minute and grab a cup of tea and coffee and I'll see you in a bit Okay guys, welcome back. Well, you know what? I think it's time to play trains. What, what do you say? I reckon it is. So first of all, let's get track one underway and get this mail train on the way. That's the mail train on the way. Let's get David Shepherd's tribute. Try and do this with one hand. <laughs> it's not easy, but I'll try. Oh, big hand from the sky comes along and puts a mailbag on the hook. It's exciting action here at Bentley Park. Meanwhile, the David Special Tribute Train comes along with a 9F.
starting to play with some more mailbags, I think. I love this. Whoever invented this is just a genius. It's so fun. You can have hours and hours and hours of fun with this. I certainly can. And you know what? My layout is not the biggest. It's a lot bigger than mine. My mate's got a shed layout. It's miles bigger than mine. But you know what? I Mine is just purely for fun. And I get hours and hours of fun out of it driving my trains. And that's all that matters. Whatever's going on outside my window, I don't care. I'm playing with my trains. End of. For those of you that have never actually seen or heard these sound chips from Train Tech, I've got mine in the rear brake van as you can hear, it's quite loud, um, about £37 in total and it just operates with a coin battery that you put in a, a watch or a little digital device and it's got a motion detector and I've done a video on this before how you install it and what it is basically but it works on motion so as long as the train is rolling it will look match the, the speed and the sounds of it roughly basically but it's a cheaper option to DCC sound damn sight cheaper and it's just a bit of fun got time for another mailbag methinks the people of Norwich might like their morning post tomorrow Comes the old night now. Beautiful. Right, I actually scratch built this little lighting panel here um, a couple of years ago. It's nothing special. That's actually made out of backing board because I think backing board's a good material <laughs> if you're on the cheap anyway. And as you can see, it's just a simple set of switches that control some lighting on the layout. If I flick these on now, if I do these all on, if I turn up the lights, then fingers crossed, you should be able to see some lights. There we go. I've done this in a previous video but I'll give you a quick spiel on about these lighting that I did for the good shed and it's basically that's my daughter trying to come in just really quickly this is basically a, a lighting strip that I got out of an old LED at work for a set of emergency exit lights and uh, just wire them up simply in, inside and super glued them in place and I think they work quite well quite a good effect so there we go and I've got most of my bulbs wired up in series so they they burn longer and last longer and they're not over bright and I, that's how I like them and there goes the old night now you can see a bit <laughs> it's a bit dark Try and pick it up. I've we'll come this way, maybe. Might be able to pick up the head codes when she comes down in a minute. There she comes. Going on down to Norwich. There she goes. Anyway, just a little bit of the railway tonight before I get invaded in a minute by my daughter. She might be outside working somewhere, I'd imagine she is. No doubt she'll come in a minute. Daddy. Daddy. 
Oh, there he comes. Hello. Daddy. Yes. I, I want that cover. What's what? I want that cover. What's that cover for? Well, what's that? I will stop you, Daddy. No, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Anyway, guys, I've got to go, but that's all from us tonight. And, uh, oh, hello. Yes, that's their mailbags. You just ruined everyone in Norwich's post for the morning. <laughs> Looks like my railway's getting sabotaged here. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Absolute chaos ensues. See you later.